I've been going over what it's like to use something called Calyx OS as my daily driver. This is replacing my old S10e that used to use the Android that came with it that was filled with Samsung, AT&T, and Google's proprietary bloatware and bullshit. In the last two videos I did, I was going over a lot of the pluses. In this video, I'm going to go over one of the big minuses. So with Calyx and Graphene OS, these are both more security and privacy focused, and they only work on pixels. The problem with it only working on a pixel is that the pixel like many modern smartphones, is missing some of the basic elements of what makes a smartphone good. Now, a lot of you watching this video may be younger, so you may not remember that smartphones used to come with things like headphone jacks, they used to come with things like micro SD card slots so you could expand the storage, so you could actually take you know, all of your music, all of your videos, all of your pictures, and just put it on there. Nowadays, you're not able to do that because the, the, the hardware has devolved. So since you don't have that much storage, you have to use something called the cloud, where you will upload your pictures and videos and music on a server and then hope and pray that you have enough bandwidth to be able to access it at any time. Because why would you want to access your stuff on really fast flash local storage when you can access it through an American 4G internet connection that has one or two bars in most parts of the city. <laughs> like why, why would you want to actually have instant access to anything? It's much better to connect to a server on the other side of the country using a cellular connection. But anyway, uh, so here you're stuck using cloud if you want to have stuff that doesn't fit on the 100 gigabytes of storage you get on this piece of shit smartphone. And the problem with that is, you know, again, if if, if I want to store more than 100 gigabytes of stuff, I mean, my music collection is more than 100 gigabytes, so I run out of space for everything else. So this comes with something called Next Cloud. That's what they're suggesting that you use. That's what Calyx pre-bundles with the phone, which is kind of like Google Drive, if Google Drive or open source, and if Google sucked. And if it sucked, uh, I don't know how else to put it. I'm, so let's just go over some of this. So you get some pluses, like stuff like Google Notes. This works very similar to Google Keep. It loads pretty fast, and it does sync with Nextcloud, which is great. So, you know, I have a lot of different things here that I can go over. I, it has stuff like Google Tasks. You have Task, that syncs. It'll sync your calendar. All that stuff works very well. Where this starts to really, you know, get into the weeds is when you actually want to share and upload and sync files. So there's a couple of problems with syncing files. So when you use Nextcloud to sync files, what you, there's a few things that you'll notice. The first thing you notice is that I started this process last week and I've been connected to a, I, I did most of this while I was at home. So I had gigabit Fios and I was getting at least 70 to 80 megabit per second over the wireless connection. And over the course of almost a week, it only uploaded 54.7 gigs. I just reconnected it here to continue. That, the math just doesn't work out on that. And you may wonder, why is it this slow? When, again, I have about 100 gigabytes to upload. Most of it is like 10 megabyte files. And it's because it doesn't spend a lot of its time uploading. So right now, if you look at the bottom, you'll see that it was uploading at like 8 to 10 megabit per second. But that's only for a very short period. Then it goes back to uploading very slowly. You'll see that it winds up going... Like right now it's 24 megabit, 5 megabit, now it's back to 17 kilobit, 6 kilobit a second, back 1.8, 10.3, now back to 2.2, 30, 13. It really doesn't make good use of the internet connection. I'll be honest with you, This is the, it got better when I turned the recording on. 99% of the time that I'm connected to a Wi-Fi network and I look at that, it's hanging around 70 to 80 kilobyte, kilobit per second. That's not kilobytes, by the way. That's kilobits. As in, that is 20 or 30 kilobit per second faster than dial-up. And you can see right now, 7 kilobit, 24 kilobit, 13 kilobit, 12 kilobit. So it just spends a lot of time just chilling there, not uploading any files at all. So the actual syncing to the cloud here, if you compare this to Google, Google Drive or iCloud, it's absolute trash. Now, what is nice about NextCloud is that you can use anywhere from, you, there's a bunch of different cloud service providers you can use. You could choose your own that runs NextCloud, or you can run your own NextCloud. If you use FreeNAS, it's pretty trivial to be able to install NextCloud on it. And again, then you'll get calendar syncing functionality, syncing of your notes, syncing of your tasks, syncing of your calendar, all that stuff that you got used to with Google. Again, you know, Google Keep, Google Tasks, Google Calendar. You get access to all of that stuff, and it actually does work pretty well when you use it with DAVX over here, which is what you use to sync it. But the problem is when it comes to the actual file syncing is it works like trash. I tried syncing to a Google Drive account using a, a slower Wi-Fi connection on the S10e, and it just uploads all that shit to Google Drive like, like, like that. 
Uh, I actually, this is, this is where it really gets to be sad, is I tried setting up Nextcloud on my own NAS and on a local network, it's slower using Nextcloud than it is uploading to Google Drive where I have to go onto the, onto the WAN instead of the LAN. This thing is so slow that even if I'm uploading on, over the LAN, like I'm connecting to something that's plugged directly into my router, it's still way slower than using my cellular connection and uploading straight to Google Drive, which is absolutely insane. And a lot of it is because it spends so much time idling and just dicking around doing nothing. Like if you look down here again, like 84 kilobit per second, like you have another 40, 50 gigabytes to go. I mean, you know, pick up the fucking pace here, bro. And if you take a look at the speed of it, uh, let's just take a look at the speed of like scrolling through pictures, right? So th again, this is the other thing that really sucks balls when you're using cloud shit versus using a micro SD card slot. When you have a micro SD card slot, shit just loads like that. I mean, it's again, it's not too, like you're not talking like, um, you know, you're not talking two gigabytes a second, like, you know, the, the flash built into an M1 or an M2 MacBook or anything, but it's fast. And then when you go to this, it's like, okay, that loaded fast because I, go figure. Uh, well, now they're loading fast because I, okay, here, yeah, this one's slow. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Like, you get the idea. Like, this is, this is, this is, this is shit. It's, it's, it's showing a, Come on, let's try it again. Yeah, like some load fast, and then this one, like 15 seconds for a fucking picture. I mean, I'm connected to Wi-Fi on a gigabit internet connection. I'm sitting right next to the router. That took 15 seconds to load a single picture. Like, that, that's shit. <laughs> I mean, like the, these two loaded fast over here, but that one loaded like shit. And it's taking forever to upload stuff here. So Nextcloud is pretty good when you are actually uh, dealing with, you know, again, calendar, tasks, stuff that doesn't, isn't bandwidth intensive. But if you're dealing with any actual files, it's, it's just trash. I don't know how else to put it. And I feel bad saying that because I get it. It's free, it's open source, it respects your privacy. Like I appreciate all that stuff. It's just, it, it's fun. It, the problem is that it's functionally useless. You know, if you're somebody coming from, uh, from dealing with Apple with iCloud or Google with Drive and you try to use this to back up your phone, stuff like NextCloud are why services like ours for data recovery are so in demand. There is so many people that tell us, I set up my backup system, I thought it was working. And then, then it's, you know, they wind up in our store with a $500 data recovery bill because it wasn't actually backing stuff up. And the other thing that I had that was a problem here, the other problem that I had is that to actually, sometimes it wouldn't actually start syncing folders. Like you would have to go over here and choose it multiple times. So when you go to options, let's see, you go settings. So when you get over here, you could see stuff like auto upload. Uh, you see you have this little cloud button over here and then you could go configure. And then you could say only upload an unmuted Wi-Fi. You could take that off. Only upload when charging, turn that off. You could say, what do you do if it exists? Overwrite. So it's pretty much set to automatically go. And sometimes it wouldn't even start uploading at all. What I'd have to do is I'd have to click this on and off. To, I would show up the next day. It still didn't upload. I'd click it on and off, show up the next day, not uploaded, come back here, turn it on and off, and then it would work. So not only is it really slow at uploading, but the other problem I was having is that sometimes it just picks and chooses when it will sync things. Which, if you're talking about a backup system, that's scary. Like, the idea that a backup system will selectively work and not work. The moment I click that button, that should start syncing immediately. Not next, not tomorrow, not two hours from now, not ten minutes from now. So something to understand if you're using this system is you will need to be able to work with the 100 gigabytes that is on your phone. If you need more than 100 gigabytes, find an alternative solution to Nextcloud. Nextcloud, I guarantee you, you're going to wind up missing syncing something, losing data, or cursing when you are trying to load a picture and again, if it's that slow when it's right next to a, you know, a router with a gigabit connection, then can you imagine what it's going to be like when you have one bar of service when you're in a garage or something. It's, it's going to be horrible. See, if you use this device with either Calyx or Graphene, you're really going to have to be able to make do with the 100 gigabytes that's on your phone. And if you're not able to make do with the 100 gigabytes on your phone, you're going to have to find some better cloud syncing software. Honestly, this is not something that I'm able to deal with, so I am most likely going to be going back to an S10e and putting Lineage OS from MicroG on it. I'd like to put Lineage OS from MicroG 
on my on a Samsung S10e so that I get the micro SD card slot because I've realized that it is far too much of an inconvenience to not be able to show people things that I want to show them on my phone. And I'm again, I, I've been trying to upload to a cloud for over a week now. It's it, I'm, that that stuff's not going to work. It's 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 far too inconvenient, and I I'm going to wind up losing data when it doesn't wind up syncing. I've also read other people talk about it, where apparently sometimes auto upload will only upload once, but it won't continue syncing into the future. It's 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 very messy, and it just seems like an excellent excellent way to wind up losing your data or ending up at a data recovery place. So those are just some thoughts. Again, I, I love the operating system, I love the device, uh, but you do have to get used to dealing with the 100 gigabytes that's on it and again the cloud options it comes with I appreciate the ethos of next cloud and the morals and the ethics of them but the, the functionality just ain't there and um, so I'm probably gonna be going over what it's like to use lineage with micro G so I'm probably gonna be going over what it is like to be using lineage OS with micro G in the coming week so that you because I want to be able to use a wider array of devices in particular a device that allows me to use a micro SD card slot that's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.